Michigan. I am driving into another snow. We have had just about two weeks of continued rain, snow mix, ice, more snow, absolute sheets of ice everywhere, and now more flurries, and it is so snowy you can't even see a quarter mile ahead. It's the weekend, so I thought it would be a really good time to head over to Menards. I gotta get some supplies because last year on Valentine's Day, I was tapping the maple trees in my yard. And I just went through an intersection and somebody decided to pull out in front of me and it was icy, so I fishtailed. I did not bother to put on my snow tires this year, so I have been staying home as much as possible. That butchering video I made where I said I'm staying home, this is why. I live in a populated enough area that it gets bad. Now I'm not off in a heavy traffic area right now. I'm actually on a side road. So I'm heading over to Menards. I gotta see about some quick connect fittings for my suction hose. I have a trash pump at home and I made a little video and I mentioned about it last year. It is a three inch trash pump and it will suck out my tote or my dairy tanks um, onto my storage trailer or wherever I need to be. The trouble is it's three inch and I'm not going to haul a three inch hose around in the woods to suck, to suck my sap. So I found that the two inch hose is okay. Um, I didn't want to go much smaller and then have it pulling too much too fast. I don't know a whole lot about the different sizes with the reducing in that, but I know they don't recommend it over a long period of time. And that's what this trash pump was bought for, to do this sap job. A lot of them start out with two inch, this one started out with three inch, so I had to pick up a reducer to go from three inch to two inch. And then I want some quick connect couplings and also a splicing um, barbed fitting to put two 25 foot hoses together because I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to go into the woods. And I don't know if I really should splice them together. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments because if I connect them and I've got 50 foot of hose to reel in, um, out in the woods. Of course, I have to do it by hand. I have looked at some swimming pool supplies for like a hose reel to be able to pull it in to have on the trailer or just to have it hanging from the trailer. I don't know what to do. You know, you're always trying to do things the best you can and you have to come up with all these ideas and inventions because they don't make for maple syrup what you're looking for. So, I just gotta kinda figure it out because short of just doing a direct pump out from one tank to another, and with the sanitary fittings I can't do that, I have to have the suction hose. So I'm gonna go see what I can find and I will get back with you. Okay, so we're at the hardware department at Menards. I'm picking up some saw items for my tubing. Um, I used this one in the past and I bought this one and returned it and I'll tell you why. Um, what I'm looking for today is something similar to this. Uh, this will cut pretty thick pipe, see, three millimeter to 42 millimeter. So this quick cut one is $14. Most of this stuff is cheaper than it is at the maple syrup place. This one is ratcheting, which works really nice, but you have to release it and it's really hard to do, um, number one, one handed, uh, but out in the woods doing your doing your work. So I'm looking at some of these others. This one says it's a PVC share. Yeah. And this one looks really good too. I think I, they don't make them so that you can open them up. But I hate to get it home and then have to come back and return it. Uh, but there's a little button. That little tiny black button is to open it up. So that might be something. Um, but like I said, the, the tools and stuff really add up a lot. So I'm trying to get what I can here to save the money. And that one is $42. This one is a ratcheting pipe and tube cutter. 
which might work really well. Okay, so this is the orbit cutting tool and it is a half inch up to one inch. So my mainline tubing is gonna be three quarter inch, I think. Um, but see, you have to get those two metal pieces in contact with each other and you can't do it one handed, so that's a problem. Okay, so with two hands, you have to pry it apart really far and then ratchet action to make it cut. So to cut all the way through, that was like five squeezes, that's going to be slow and time consuming. So like I said, I actually had one of these before and I returned it because the tubing I was cutting was only 5 sixteenths and this was way too slow. And this made it faster but it's not spring loaded. So I didn't like that part of it. So let's go see what they have in the um, other pipe cutting section. Um, I'm going to actually look at Pex tubing cutters. So of course I got over to the tubing cutting section and of course it's filled full of men wondering what I'm doing. So I just got you some snapshots online to show you. Now a lot of different sizes are available and you have to take that into consideration when you're choosing which mainline size to install. And these Rothenberg cutters really seem to be pretty good, but the replacement blades are three quarters of the cost of the actual tool itself. In the maple syrup supply book, they are just using a pruning type scissor for like gardening. Super easy to have on hand and you can do a lot of different sizes. So this size here, the three quarters, will cut through what I'm planning on using. And this little device here can go into your pocket. It's just got a built-in blade, easy to use. Another upgrade I'm trying to make is this pump system so that the kids don't have to climb up to the IBC tote on the trailer for dumping their pails. It just simply attaches to the hitch of any vehicle or trailer. You pump it all up and it transfers up into the tank on the back of your trailer or truck. Real handy, easy to use but I've got to figure out the electrical system and the pump. Now an alternative is making a low trailer like this with a couple of 55 gallon barrels connected together, but then the kids still have to get up on top. Lightweight, easy, and portable for going into the woods, and you can filter it as it comes out when you're putting it into your evaporator. Okay, so I think this is what I need here. It's a 12 volt um, DC backup sump pump system, and this can run off of the battery on the trailer so that we can um, put maple sap into a tank, like a 55 gallon barrel cut, uh, pour into that, and then this pump will run off of the battery and pump it up um, by this into the tote or tank on the trailer. So this is, it looks like $199. It was $250 and they are marking them out unless the shelf tag is wrong because it's kind of off center of where it is. But I don't think this is that. So we're going to kind of look into this. Oh, nope. It's even better. Now I see the tag. It's $139. So that will save us walking up onto the top of the trailer which is good for the kids because they can't really reach it and lift it that high and it's a two-year limited warranty so we are going to see about that um i think they've got an 11 percent sale oh here's a different one this one says professional grade okay this looks like it's got two pumps five-year warranty gonna have some looking into this to do uh uh-huh I don't need the alarm system, but I do like the style of float better. Um, our own system at home came with one of these and we switched it to that for our sump pump in the basement. Uh, I don't know if we have this one. Well, it's the older version because it's new. Um, we have one of these Coleman pumps. They're cast iron instead of made of plastic, but it's, it's one of these two anyways. Okay, so after I did a lot more reading, I found out this professional pack. It is a primary pump and a backup, and I don't want to run a generator and have that going, which I could easily do with one of these if we were taking a generator out there. Um, I am going to go for this one because it's just running off the battery and I can cut the power to it whenever I want.
Okay, so if you're doing the pumping smaller, you can do this little unit gas powered. 219 for a one inch uh, suction hookup, so that's not bad. Um, and they have all this hose here. The trouble is the hose is not food grade, and most of them are going to be two inch. So you're going to have to get fittings and stuff for that, so that would work on um, these gator locks. Are what I'm looking for for my hose fitting so I have to run that over and show him but you see just you know all this little stuff it just starts adding up so so much um, but this is about what we have I don't see anything on the mm -hmm, 249 2 inch so this is similar to what we would have and this is the Menards they have a bigger well, let's see this is 2 inch 469 this is a bigger 2 inch, 849. Ours is the size of this, but I don't know about the gallons per minute. We'll have to do a comparison. But I'd say for 150, we did good. So, yay, I got exactly what I needed Gator Locks with Quick Connect. I'm so excited. I'm going to get this home and get it fitted on my home. So, I got home. Just drove more and more into more snow. Had to put the vehicle into four-wheel drive. I am not thinking about doing maple syrup tonight. I'm trying to think about what I can do to stay warm. Miss Bethany is waiting on some hot cocoa and I think I'm gonna join her because I need a warm-up. I got home, the cows needed to be fed. I'm filling their water tanks right now behind me. Burr, it is a doozy. I just can't wait for Tuesday to come because it's supposed to warm up just a bit to 38 degrees. Every few degrees makes a huge difference and it's swinging 10 to 20 degrees around here lately. So stay warm everybody, get to your maple syrup, plan what you can, get done what you can, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.